boxing is mostly up here. Right up here, you know, you get in good condition, you got your speed and all that stuff, but it's up here, you gotta be smart. At this point, I want just to go to the Olympics and try to win a medal. I'm going to win a medal in the Olympics. Martial arts is not for everybody, but everybody can find their way in it. Boxing was introduced in the Cayman Islands back in the 1940s by the late Dalmine Evans. More than 60 years later, the sport is stronger than ever. Although some see the sport as violent, its proponents see it differently. Uh, the art of boxing is, frankly, there's a reaction for every action. You have to do something to get a certain reaction. You can't just go in there and fight, fight, fight you get your head knocked off that way. You can't be in there angry. You have to be in there as, as smart as you possibly can. It's more to boxing than just two people fighting. I mean, that's a very narrow view of the sport because it truly is a science and it's a sport. And if boxing was just, you know, a violent sport, then it wouldn't be practiced in the Olympics or in, in over 196 countries in the world. I don't consider boxing a violent sport. I consider boxing, you know, uh, a chess game, a smart guy's sport. You have a lot of fighters that's in there just swinging wild and just wanting it, not other person out. They normally don't win every fight. Boxing is mostly up here, right in physical. You know, you get in good condition, you got your speed and all that stuff, but it's up here. You got to be smart. A key milestone in the history of K-Man boxing occurred in 2009 with the completion of the D. Dalmine Ebanks Boxing Gym. With a proper facility available in Georgetown, K-Man's first official youth boxing program started soon after. When the first after school program first started back in 2009, when the gym was built, it was only me alone here. I was the only coach. I went over to the high school, had a meeting with the teachers, gave some motivational talking speeches to the students, and I left, and the next day the teacher called me and he said, um, how many people do you think signed up? And I said, 25. He said, more than that. And I said, 40. He said, more. I said, 45. He said, 60. I couldn't believe it. Well, like I said to myself, what am I going to do in this big facility with 60 children? That's too much for me. I couldn't swallow. Okay? Anyway, I said, what can I do? I got to try something. I can't say no, they can't come. You don't want to run anyone away, because that could be the chopper you're running away, you see? And today, Tafari Banks was one of those guys that started to come here, and he's still in to it right now and doing very well. And I remember when Kendall stepped into the gym, and he was 17 years old, and I remember when Tafari stepped into the gym, and he was 15. Um, Tafari actually is the first graduate of the extended after school program and now he's competing at the elite level internationally. Tafari and Kendall, I can't say enough really good things about them. They're two very young local Caymanians who have a drive and a desire to be Olympic gold medalists. And as the president of the association, it makes me proud because they have the will to be able to 
want to represent their country at the highest level and win. Although the Cayman Islands now has two elite amateur boxers in Kendall Ebanks and Tafari Ebanks, there are boxing programs for all ages and abilities, including for women. We get uh, all sorts of different ages. We get from ages 12 uh, all the way up to 65. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, the after school program comes in. They'll bring anywhere between 20 and 40 kids, depending on what day it is. Um, we also have uh, our adult program, which is we call it Open Gym, in the evenings where uh, a lot of women come. So we get the entire gamut of people, no matter what age. It doesn't matter really how old you are. Anybody can box or learn how to box or participate in the activities. Getting children involved in boxing at an early age is now a focus in the Cayman Islands. Right now I'm taking memes, talking to parents, and trying to get the younger ones into it because I realize that the Cubans has the best program in the world, but I've been there too, and I've seen the age just start, and I realize that that's what we have to do to build the, the boxing team. You have to start from a young tender age, I think when they reach high school, it's, it's kind of late. And that's a problem we're having today. So with this facility now, we're able to get a lot more children in the gym. And young children that are right now into the boxing, and some of them looking very good, a lot of talent. I'm identifying a lot of talent. The kids that mostly come into boxing are kids that feel, I'm not the great basketball player, I'm not the great soccer player, I'm not the great swimmer, I'm not great at those other sports. They come into boxing and they find out, wow, this is what I've been looking for. That feeling for me when I'm in the ring, it's just me alone. That, that's what I really like about uh, boxing. It's the work that I put in is what I get out, you know. So in, in football, you have a whole team. So someone on your team can be slacking, but in boxing, it's just you alone. You, you have to put in everything in training. You go in the ring, it's you alone, and you know you've done your training. I said, you, you're okay. Uh, I didn't grow up in the best of circumstances, so um, boxing was more or less of an outlet for me. Um, so now coming here and seeing a lot of the kids that are in the program, most of them come from, you know, uh, broken homes or, or they just have a level of antisocial behavior about them where it really can be fixed and fixed uh, over time, but it just takes um, investment as far as time and resource and be able to to guide them through the correct path so you can develop them along the way so they become mature adults. My, and my behavior just changed my discipline and the way how I look at things in life now. It shows me responsibilities and also the way how to talk and to approach people in the world. Boxing teaches much needed self-discipline to many children. It helps to discipline the mind in every way. And the reason why is because it's a sport that involves um, the movement of your entire body. It's a science, relatively. So essentially what, what you have to do is you have to do a lot of control of how you eat and, and, and your, the regimen that you do in order to train properly, in order to maintain a certain weight so you can compete competitively. Uh, also remaining in shape and being able to perform at the most optimal level. Boxers have to learn how to master their bodies in order to get it right. And if they don't master their bodies, then it becomes very difficult and a very painful experience in the ring. Boxing, you gotta be physically, mentally, and all as well, running, hands, shape, and all that, because it's, you work, you work in every part of the body, so you gotta be in extreme shape to do all of this. Boxing isn't an easy sport. To become good at it, it requires dedication and sacrifice. You, you have to make sacrifices. Um, I wouldn't call it bad. I think you got you have to put in more into boxing than your social life. So you, your social life will go down a little bit. Boxing is gonna come up, and that's the truth. That's the way that you got to make sacrifices to get better in boxing. Because it's such a hard sport that you 
You can't take it halfway. You gotta put in everything. Boxing is such a tough sport. If you look around, you see a lot of children playing soccer, netball, basketball, cricket, volleyball. All of the sports is packed with a lot of competitors. So now the children that are coming to boxing after the final have tough it is sometimes they kind of pull away from it because they can't take the mental and the physical strength of it. The goal of K-Man Boxing is to develop boxers who can compete on an elite international level. The best aspect of Cayman boxes that stand out to me is these guys have what we call natural ability. Our goals are to elevate ourselves, move a step forward in amateur boxing. Not just be a pretender, we want to be contenders in the amateur boxing here. With boxing, it's not about just showing up. We're not happy just to show up, just we get a free ticket to Rio. For us, we are absolutely focused on a gold medal in the Olympics, period. And we will uh, organize our program, our training program, around developing their abilities and their skills in that manner. At this point, I want just to go to the Olympics and try to win a medal. I'm going to win a medal in the Olympics. For Safari Ebanks and Kendall Ebanks, the road to Rio travels through Cuba, where they get training with some of the best amateur boxers in the world. Cayman has the opportunity. We build the relationship with Cuba to where they allow our boxers to come there and train with the elite team. These guys get to work with gold medal winners. I mean, world champions. This is something that's awesome to have in your program. You're there every day in the, uh, the National Cuban facility. You're training with Olympians every day, gold medalists, silver medalists, bronze medalists. Every caliber of fighter is there in that gym. You have to get better in that gym. The experience of going to Cuba is really going to step up my, my level in boxing. I have been there three times now, and every time I have went there, I have always learned something new. I was working with the world's best. So therefore, I'm looking to step up my game as well. Producing more amateur boxers of the caliber of Tafari and Kendall will take a community commitment to the sport. You know, now we've passed the point where the, uh, uh, having infrastructure is not an issue for boxing. Now we have to get to the point where we need, you know, the entire community to understand that we need funding, public and private, to be able to really make this work. And it can work. Tafari defeating uh, one of the world champions from Baku was a testament to that. You know, most people can say, oh, well, you know, people thought that we would never be able to beat any of the Cubans. And we've shown that not only can we compete with the best, we can beat them. So we need the support to be able to rally behind our most gifted young athletes and be able to support them so they can develop and become Olympians that they can represent each and every one of us in Rio. For some of Cayman's youth, boxing is a sport that brings structure and opportunities to their lives. Yeah, I would definitely encourage other people, young people, to get involved in boxing because, you know, it helps with your discipline. You, you want to live a, a strong, fit, healthy life. That, that's, an, that's a good way to get healthy. Um, you want to you wanna compete at a high level. Boxing is right there. Boxing all around is it's a great sport. It teaches you a lot. You can learn a lot from boxing. It's made me believe that anything is possible, you know. Um, I didn't I didn't see myself traveling all over the world fighting in world championships, Olympic qualifiers. So that just shows me I'm capable of anything. I can I can do anything and just help my life. The first martial arts school opened up in the Cayman Islands in the 1980s. Cayman Karate Academy and Purple Dragon have both been around for more than two decades now. When I first started martial arts, 
it was a new thing for Cayman. It was more what people saw in the movies. So people who came to martial arts for recreation. You know, they came because they enjoyed it, they saw what these guys do in the movies and they want to do like that, break balls and fly over mountains and all that kind of stuff. But uh, where we teach, the way we teach, we teach for recreation. We want to build a new person, build a healthy body, build a healthy mind, build their self-confidence, build their discipline. Over the years, more than 10,000 people have taken martial arts classes in those schools. Some of the most uh, prominent um, uh, business owners and uh, uh, attorneys, doctors, uh, we end up having uh, students like Frankie Flowers who train with us. He's a Hollywood producer now. Uh, he said this was a big part of his, uh, his growing up. And um, also we had Brian Braggs who trained with us for at least 10 years. Local film star and businessman. He's traveled the world with us competing. He was an instructor and he received his first degree black belt. One more really high profile student was actually the Lone Ranger. The Army Hammer who played the Lone Ranger in the Disney movie recently, he trained with us as well. And they took the lessons to be taught of focus, discipline, never give up attitude and applied it to college and to life. People come because they want to learn self-defense. All right, because they have a certain fear and they want to learn to protect themselves and become more confident. Two, maybe they want to change their image. All right, they want to become more healthy, so they want to exercise, lose some weight, or maybe gain some weight and become stronger, so they want a, a better body, all right, that could be more healthy. And three, because they want to change. They want uh, to, to have a different social interaction, all right, and they want to do something that's fun and enjoyable and something that they could use when they leave. Martial arts isn't only for boys and men, many girls and women enjoy it too. Well, in our system, we don't have, we don't have men and women, we have students. So we put them all through the, same, through the same routine. We don't treat anybody differently. With respect, of course, but we give them all the same, the same thing. We've had some, some ladies that have come here to do our self-defense courses. And in teaching a self-defense course, you never know what people have held up inside them and that comes out because if you think about about for example some of the anger management therapy they teach you to scream use primal scream to strike something soft and yielding or to stamp and move move your body around to agitate these things out and that's exactly what they do they scream with martial arts they strike the pads like they move around and they get themselves active and they release all that pent up emotion. Most martial arts students start when they are children, when parents are looking to add some structure and discipline to their lives. You know, their parents are looking for, some, for an outlet for all that youthful energy. And they're also looking for the discipline because most of the kids in that program, they are that stage of life where they're, they're stretching, they're growing, they're challenging boundaries, and so on. And they want somewhere to, somewhere to find positive focus for that energy. And they bring them here and that flows back into their, into their academic work, into their other sports as well. You know, so, and parents are pleased with the results because the kids, they learn discipline, they learn self-control, they learn how to use that energy in a positive way. Within a year, the most you will see up front is discipline. That's the biggest change you're gonna see in your child within the first year. Discipline, the ability to follow instructions, the ability to take care of their own space, whether it be from when they take out their toys to put in it back, to packing their shoes away neatly, to completing their homework. These are the things that we instill. The first level, your foundation is discipline. Without discipline, we have nothing to build upon. So within the first year, that, that crucial first year, you're definitely gonna see a, a, a difference in their discipline along with the physical aspect of the martial arts. Martial arts has been a big help in just you know raising me from a child to where I am now. Um, it helped me with my focus, helped me with my discipline, helped me with my determination. Also, I mean, physically, because I was, you know, I was the kid who was always coming in last in the races. Sports day, I wasn't going home with any medals. You know, the first couple of years after I started Purple Dragon, I could see I was getting faster, stronger. I was actually winning things. So it helped with my confidence, too. I definitely believe that martial arts teaches the kids to respect each other. It teaches them to not only respect each other, but to respect the elders, to respect anyone, because everyone has greatness in them. At the end of each class, each child has to turn to a friend and shake their hand and look them in the eye and say, you have greatness in you. 
bring it out. We'll see you next class. So these kids learn to respect one another and they learn to acknowledge that everybody has something about them that is good and that is important. So, you know, they learn the value of life. The responsibility to use martial arts skills properly is something that is emphasized to the young students. As a student of Don Chichiru, I will respect the value of all and citizens to life. See the true and visions of life. Be humble. Build a good character. Build a strong and versatile self. Build my techniques with an unshakable manner. Use Don Chichiru for the success and the ultimate perception. And advise security for loved ones, country, and once nice. No pain, no gain. Surpass ourselves. Today is a reality, tomorrow is a promise, yesterday was history. I believe in Don Jesus' system because I believe in me. At the end of the class, they say something that we call Dojo Kun, or pledge. Right? And part of it says to use, to use it for, for love, to protect loved one's country and what's right. And they have to understand what's right and when is the right time. We teach them, you know, you know walk away. We teach them anti-bullying, you know, to step back and to to let an adult take, take charge and to use it just as a la only as a last resort. We will not teach them to start a fight, but if you start a fight, they're going to finish it. Martial arts offers many benefits to children. For children, especially for teens, it's more of a, it's usually it starts off as a, like I said, a recreation or a social thing, or they come in for the sporting aspect of it. But those that stay, they stay because they they feel themselves changing, they feel themselves becoming stronger, they feel themselves becoming more disciplined, more in control. Plus, it provides a positive atmosphere, especially for the teens. Positive peer pressure, positive atmosphere, a, a group where they can belong, because they all want to belong to something. As a 16-year-old kid growing up, my name was Fat Boy. That's what they used to call me, because I was a chubby kid, and I was the, 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 the object of bullies' taunts. They used to take my stuff, tease me, do lots of stuff. So what I wanted to do was to learn to defend myself. I learned to kick butt like Jackie Chan for a few months and then go back to school and show these bullies something. Then I joined Purple Dragon School of Martial Arts. And I learned that martial arts is a lot more than just the kick and punch. And uh, ironically in this story, by the time I really learned to defend myself when I felt I could do some real damage, by that point in time, somehow the bullies stopped picking on me. You know, it, it just my confidence, my aura, my body began to change and the whole bullying aspect. I didn't have to raise my hand against anyone, all right? So martial arts is a powerful thing. Some of the benefits that, that I feel I, I've acquired from, from martial arts is more confidence. I was extremely shy as a, as a young boy. I ended up get, gaining more and more confidence because my physical skills became better and better. I started teaching martial arts, and people liked it. And it, it, it made me open up and talk more. What I really like in karate is how you can protect your parents if someone breaks in your house. I can just like get a broomstick and use my techniques to attack them. With crime on the upswing in Canaan, there's more interest than ever in martial arts. The social situation has changed and now the focus of martial arts has changed. So first it was for exercise and recreation, then it was for competition, and now it seems that people are looking at more to the self-defense practical aspect of it. We ended up teaching a, a seminar, uh, a sem seminar unlike anything ever taught in the Cayman Islands before. It was called Fast Defense. 
and FAST is an acronym for Fear Adrenal Stress Pain. We have trained over 1,200 people doing teaching these FAST defense seminars. Uh, we have done anti-bullying seminars. It's an anti-bullying stranger danger program where we teach children how to use uh, non-violence conflict resolutions, the power of their voice, to not look like a victim that a bully would want to pick on. And then the second part of the seminar, we teach them how to back away an adult predator. In addition to teaching potential victims of crimes how to defend themselves, proponents believe martial arts also helps prevent criminals. We provide a service at no cost to the government because what we're doing is we're helping, we're helping take young people off the streets and build them up. We are preventing crime because we're getting them before they become a criminal. You know, that's the aspect of it that, that people are now beginning to appreciate. Because the kids inside here, for one, you won't hear about them starting a fight. Later on as they graduate, they won't be the ones that be out there grabbing people's purses and breaking into people's homes because they have that discipline. Whether, they, whether they're still here or not, they have that discipline. I would like to see the world as a better place and this is my contribution to help make the world a better place. One child at a time. Now, it's been said, you hear people say, oh well, karate can't stop a bullet. I beg to disagree and my head instructor, Professor Jacob, and my, all my teachers before beg to disagree. They can stop bullets. How do they do it? We stop it before they put the gun in their hand. We teach the little ones that, hey, look, violence is not the answer. Some people think that martial arts is violent. Martial arts is non-violent. Martial arts is stopping the violence before it starts. It's developing that self-control and that self-awareness, all right? Knowing that you can, if you needed to, defend yourself and protect yourself effectively so you don't have to prove anything to the other person. But if they bring the fight to you, you have the ability to stop it there and then. Many children start martial arts because their parents want them to learn discipline. Adults stay in martial arts for a variety of reasons. Both young and old take away lessons that last for life. For me, it's the company that I keep. That's the main thing for me. Like being surrounded by so much positive energy from other people. What keeps me in the martial arts, when I was younger, it was being competitive. It was going to the tournaments, you know, winning trophies, the, the, the fame and the, the stardom of people going, ooh, you know, that's that guy. Um, a little bit later on, it became the kids. To see a kid come in and stumble and they can't run, they can't stand straight, you know, they're dealing with bullies and that kind of stuff, and see them do their first uh, grade in their rank testing or winning their first trophy, to see that excitement in their eyes and in their parents' eyes of, you know, I did it, I did it, I did it. That, that's what brings the, um, the joy to me. When I come here to train, I release my stress here. Like, not just punching the bat, not anger. It's more of just releasing it. I leave it at the door, forget everything as I step in to read. After that, when I train, I just forget about the issues that go on in my everyday life. And usually when I come out, I forgot I even have those issues. And I face and tackle them in a different way that I wouldn't have found it before. If my instructor said, Bob, I will give you all your money back, okay, for your lessons that you paid me. And, but you erase everything that you learned. I would say, no way. In football, you can slide and then you either get a red card or you might get away by boxing, you can hit a person without getting in trouble. Of course, I'm sure Santa Cindy can tell you that she's kicked me on the head a couple times already. <laughs> I remember one time, and I guess we're 49, when I was about 50 years old, I boxed uh, a Hungarian fellow by the name of Doug Moore. And I lost the fight, but he got the worst with because. After the bell, top leg, I was still hitting him. 